Hello and welcome to Hacking the Exile, the show where we go behind the scenes of the very popular webisode Exile 6E. Today I'm glad to present my colleague and co-star of the show, Julian Benz. Hello, Matthias. <laughs> Hello, glad to have you here. So, Thanks. you are portrayed as the Frenchman in the show. Why, would, why, why, did, you stick, why did we stick with that name? Well, actually, um, I don't know. I, I didn't choose this, uh, this name. Uh, could it be because you're French? It could be, indeed. Oh, okay, so <laughs> how come that you as a French guy works for a Swedish MEP? I mean, most assistants here tend to be of the same nationality as, as their MEPs. Well, I think, I think because... Um, I think because, because uh, both uh, Amelia and we all in the office, um, I mean, uh, we maybe give less importance to, uh, uh, to keeping a, a national, uh, one specific nationality as regards working in the European Parliament. I think um, it was not seen as a barrier for me, and it was not seen as a barrier for Amelia, nor for you. Um, and I think, um, I think personally, this is this is a uh, great. Uh, so uh, I think this is uh, yes, this is uh, what how we how we should uh, be in Europe. In Europe, I think. Uh, but you speak fluent Swedish. <laughs> <laughs> you mean? Well, exactly. No, I don't. I don't speak uh, fluent Swedish, and this is uh, even more. I think. Uh, uh, rewarding for uh, for my Swedish colleagues uh, to accept that uh, one of the member of the of the office uh, doesn't be, doesn't speak um, the national language. Of course, I'm uh, uh, I'm in a minority, uh, but a French minority at the Swedish office. <laughs> exactly, but um, but I think it's a, it's a great sign of uh, of openness, and um, I'm I'm really happy to to experience this. Uh, honestly, yes, and I think it's uh, it's moving some barriers, you know. Uh, um, Does it ever become an obstacle? Do you get uh, emails or calls where people uh, expect you to speak Swedish for you as you work in Swedish? No, the, this is what is fantastic. I mean, uh, the, when I talk to Swedish assistants, also from other political groups, they completely accept uh, this, and uh, sometimes I. Uh, apologize for not being uh, able to read the emails but then they, they they translate to English for them it's not a problem at all and uh, I think uh, this is uh, very very nice and uh, <laughs> it is very nice yes and um, I really appreciate this um, open-minding way of seeing things perhaps you could even say that it's actually a strength to have a, a French assistant in the office well yes I think uh, I think I can, uh, yes, I, I establish contacts with uh, French-speaking people here in the Parliament, uh, um, yes, in a way that maybe um, Amelia or other people from the office uh, would not have the possibility to do so, just because of the French language. Um, of course, everyone speaks English here, uh, uh, but it's true that um, it's, uh, it's good for when we uh, have to deal with uh, the administration. Sometimes this, the admi administrative staff uh, um, doesn't speak English or l less English than French. And uh, we are in Brussels, in a, French, in a still French-speaking uh, uh, city, uh, mostly, so uh, it is useful. And of course, um, um, I mean, we have a lot of French colleagues or French-speaking colleagues within um, the political groups of the Greens. So, um, yes, I think this is... Maybe I can add some particular contacts. Uh, no, I, I happen to know that you're actually active in the French Pirate Party, but that was not the case when you started working here. How did that change come about? <laughs> well, um, yes, I mean, um, I, um, I have started to get in contact with... Um, actually uh, the French uh, pirates uh, abroad um, and in particular the French uh, pirates um, in Brussels. Um, I mean I'm establishing the contact and uh, it's true that I'm a, a bit uh, I'm willing to to get closer to the to the um, um, really to how the pirate movement is being is involving um, also in the French-speaking environment, not a Swedish or a German one. And um, 
I mean, this is uh, this is uh, natural. Um, I have uh, since the beginning, even if I was, I am, or I was outside the pirate movement as such, uh, I immediately uh, um, uh, agreed. I did immediately agreed with uh, what the, the pirate wants, their vision of the society, um, the fights that they are. Um, ready to, to bear in the um, European institutions and in the national countries where they are present. Uh, so um, for me, it's yes, it's. Uh, I think it's also. Uh, I'm starting to get involved in um, political activism, and uh, and uh, this is something new for me. So basically, this is a result of you being exposed to the pirate community. Yes, absolutely. But let's get back to the show. In the show, I would say that you're portrayed as, uh, well, we've seen two sides. We've seen you very busy working and we've seen you very happy. Uh, is that, is, does that capture all of you? Are there more sides to you that we haven't seen in the show so far? <laughs> I don't know. I, well, I, I guess, uh, yes, I, um, uh, maybe you, um, you saw me very busy in the files when I, I felt uh, really uh, involved in, in uh, uh, yes, uh, since uh, one year that we are here working together, uh, um, yes, I think I, I, li I have uh, been involved uh, with, uh, I think, personal energy in, uh, in uh, some, some files, some big files. Uh, and um, if and I don't know, I'm, I'm, <laughs> yes, I hope, I hope that I can give this energy for all the files without discrimination, but maybe, maybe I can be selective also. <laughs> and if you should select two files that you think has been the most important for you while working here, which ones would you select? Well, I think it would be ACTA when we arrived. I mean, uh, this was uh, very, uh, very important and uh, we were um, transported by, uh, by, uh, by an energy uh, to, to, to fight against this, uh, this treaty. And, uh, and uh, yes, I think we never looked back at what energy we spent into it, but uh, the result was positive and it was very satisf satisfactory for us. Uh, the second, I would say, uh, this is more recent, um, it, was, uh, it is the data protection, we're still on it. I mean, uh, the, the vote in our committee, in the industry committee, um, um, has passed, uh, but um, the file uh, will be discussed in the next months in the parliament. And this is uh, um, this is um, a hard fight we're having, and um, so we we don't know the outcome yet. But um, I would say this is the second file that. Both these files have been uh, prominent in the show. ACTA was the entire first season, and the data protection has been a theme for for this season. Yes. So if you're working with these big files, very important for the show, perhaps could it be said that you're actually not in the show as much as you deserve? <laughs> oh, <laughs> I, I'm trying to fake that I am modest. <laughs> so I will see. I will say uh, <laughs> I don't deserve to be more in the show. No, but uh, to be honest, uh, I'm happy if this can uh, balance the equilibrium and... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and give me more visibility, but um, yes. Um. But we're, we're slowly uh, cutting down on the work with uh, data protection since it's no longer in the industry committee where, where you're working. Yes. Which, which is the new big file for you? Which will be the new data protection? Hmm. The new data protection? Well, <laughs> I mean, um, I think we have, uh, for me, I would say we'll have this cybersecurity package that will be important. It's a technical file uh, that, of course, have repercussions on the, on the European citizens uh, in their fundamental rights uh, and how their fundamental rights or their rights are respected. And this is connected to Horizon 2020, right? Uh, this is also, yes, um, related to um, Horizon 2020, but the, um, yeah, this is a whole new agenda for uh, fighting, detecting cybersecurity, and and we would we will try to be we will be vigilant that uh, that uh, this uh, cybersecurity priority um, uh, observes and and respects um, a fair balance. Uh, now, the regular user will have no idea what I meant when I said Horizon 2020. What is Horizon 2020? Horizon 2020 is uh, one of the 
big parts um, of the European politics for the next seven years until 2020. Uh, Horizon 2020 is uh, and embodies all the politics and the budgets that will be allocated to um, research and innovation. The whole, the, how the European Union uh, and where the European Union will uh, will spend money for um, for research and innovation and for creating the future growth of the European Union. Now it it did. It did turn out quite well for us with ACTA. I mean, it was a huge success. Yes. Data protection, we're still uncertain of, but it doesn't look that good. What about the cybersecurity? Is this something that we can uh, add to our list of victories at the end of the legislature? I mean, um, the cybersecurity, I think, will be uh, hopefully less politically conflictual. Um, we hope that uh, we can uh, uh, manage that the European the Parliament and the European institutions, um, um, how do you say, don't harm um, the, um, the rights of the European citizens uh, when dealing with cybersecurity. Um, we think that we can, we hope that we can avoid uh, an excessive mass surveillance um, that would be detrimental to our citizens. But basically we're looking for a compromise. Yes, yeah, so we're, we're, we're looking, well, we don't know yet the, the real positions of everyone, so I think we're in an in expectative uh, uh, position. Um, so let's see when the cards will be put on the table. Let's see how we will react, but um, I think this file will can 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 deal to um, acceptable conclusions. I think there yes, I think it should be it should be uh, less conflictual and less difficult that uh, data protection where um, where it is a, a real problem right now. Okay, let's let's hope for the best. Yes. Let's let's go back to a more personal question. Yes. When you signed up for this job a couple of years ago. Yes. Uh, did you expect this level of visibility? I mean, you're, you're a star of a webisode, you're uh, appearing here, you're also uh, appearing on the live streaming from our external office that we do uh, every other, well, every week. Uh, did you perceive yourself as sort of a public figure when, when you applied for the job, or is this something that was just sprung upon you? Uh, I didn't expect that at all uh, because it is. I think it is not really in the tradition to uh, to make the assistance uh, of a member of the European Parliament uh, visible uh, in terms of uh, media and uh, and uh, yes. So uh, I didn't expect that at all, uh, and I think it is. Uh, it's very uh, creative, um, exciting. Uh, it. Um, I would say also it uh, yes it uh, it gives some uh, responsibility also and I think it is a, it uh, I think it gives an impression of a, a collaborative effort uh, uh, toward the tasks that uh, um, Amelia and we want to achieve for the European Union and I think it's uh, it's uh, very pleasant I didn't expect that I uh, maybe I we will, I will improve in the way to communicate because uh, I need to adapt. But uh, yes, so it's um, exciting. Okay, so you're adapting to a life in front of the camera, uh, <laughs> yes. always uh, surveilled uh, in the exile. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you for having you here and thank you all for watching. We will be back with another episode of Hacking the Exiles in two weeks. Hello, as you might recall, in the last episode of Hacking the Exile, we introduced a coffee competition when we asked the viewers what kind of coffee we drink here at our office. Now, the correct answer is, of course, Suegas. Anyone who have seen the previous episode of Exile 6E will be aware of this. 
and the correct answer was given to us in, well, I would say minutes, but very quickly after the episode was aired, and it was sent in by Hannes Wittuka uh, from uh, Stockholm in Sweden, and he will be awarded with this very very nice looking Exile 6E t-shirt, which will be sent to him shortly. I hope you'll enjoy it. <laughs> 